Washington, the Senate Finance Committee is still working on what some members hope will become a bipartisan health care proposal. How close is the committee to reaching a final draft? Republican Senator Arne Hatch, she's a senior member of the Finance Committee and of the Judiciary Committee, also serves on the Health, Education and Labor Committee, which has been crafting its legislation. Senator, thanks so much. Uh, last week, you, uh, with some fanfare from the committee, you stepped away from those bipartisan talks. We're told by uh, Senator Graf Lastly, in a fellow comm committee member, Republican, who told Al Hunt on Bloomberg this weekend that the odds are very good, very, very good, of a workable compromise passing this year. Uh, obviously not before the August recess, but something happening this year. Do you agree with that prognosis? Well, I don't agree with that. I think, <clears throat> I think we all need to work together and try to get something that will pass that will be worthwhile that literally would cut costs, but also spread uh, coverage to those who uh, really deserve coverage. So I'm willing to work on that, but I just felt like I needed to walk away because I was in disagreement with some of the uh, uh, some of the approaches that I felt they were putting into the bill, and I just felt it was the honorable thing to do to not, uh, not be there under false pretenses. Kent Conrad, the budget chairman, is talking now over the weekend about that co-op plan, replacing the public option. Uh, you've got Senator Kerry's Cadillac tax on the Cadillac plans, the very expensive plans. Do those options move you any closer to being in agreement? Well, uh, certainly Kerry, Senator Kerry's plan did not. Uh, on the, on the so-called so co-op, uh, I don't think that's going to work either because uh, Senator Schumer and other liberals are saying that you would still have to have a, an inside the Beltway federal co-op that would uh, be the same as uh, government takeover of health care. So unless they, um, unless they can come up with some really reasonable way of making it a regional or state approach, I don't think the co-op thing is going to go. It was a nice thought by uh, Senator Conrad of uh, North Dakota, who was trying to come up with something all other than uh, the government-run system that most uh, liberal Democrats really want to have. And I think Senator Baucus is doing his best to try and bring people together. I, I commend him for what he's trying to do, but you know, I, it seems to me that number one, they want this government-run plan, one way or the other, whether it's co-op called co-op or not. Number two, they seem to want uh, an employer mandate, which is a job-killing approach to to healthcare. Number three, they want to bring people in more and more people into Medicaid with a full Medicaid expansion, and the states are up in arms about that because they know they'll ultimately inherit all the costs on Medicaid, and uh, and and they can't afford it. Senator, we've got dueling blogs from budget experts over the weekend. You had a Saturday morning post from Doug Elmendorf at the Congressional Budget Office saying that the new plan coming out of the White House and uh, some of the other blue dogs, which would allegedly reduce Medicare payments, would only save $2 billion over 10 years. That's the independent board proposal. Then you had a response from Peter Orzag, who used to head the Congressional Budget Office and knows most of the economists, probably hired most of those economists, saying Saying that they were looking at the wrong data and basically saying that uh, as a former CBO director I can attest that CBO is sometimes accused of a bias toward exaggerating costs and underestimating savings. Well perhaps your budget saving is from where you sit but Orzag uh, very strongly objects to what the CBO is saying. Do you have a dog in this hunt? Do you know whether or do you have a judgment as to whether uh, the CBO can be trusted on its two billion dollars in savings from that uh, commission approach? Well, as you know, Douglas Elmendorf was uh, picked by the Democrats to head the CBO. Now that he's giving what he thinks are true, true uh, figures here, they're uh, contesting it. And to be honest with you, I expect them to attack him, even though I think he's been one of the best budget directors we've had in my whole time in the United States Senate. He's honest. He's calling it the way he sees it. And I don't think anybody looking at it can say that you're going <laughs> to, like the president says, you're going to save money in the long run. There's no way you're going to do that. It's going to be more and more expensive and everything is coming down to rationing. Why do you think they want to set up this new uh, group here in Washington? Five uh, uh, great doctors that the president will appoint who determine just what can and cannot be done in health care. They want to do that for the one purpose and that's to ration care. But don't, don't and, we ration uh, now? We ration by access now and, and we ration by income and class. Uh, certain people get more because they come in, you know, from a, with a certain amount of insurance protection. I mean, isn't that rationing? I don't think so. But, uh, you know, let's face it, when you're not getting the health care you really want, 
uh, you're going to feel like it's rationing to you. So in that sense, yes. But uh, let me tell you, they're talking about real rationing. That is saying that you can't have this procedure because you're a certain uh, age in, in, in society. Just like in England, uh, certain drugs you can't have because they're more expensive, even though they may work better for you. There are a whole raft of things that uh, rationing would take away from the rights of people that I, I don't think we should go there. And I, you know, I, look, when it comes back to Mr. Elbendorf, I expect the White House, I expect the uh, Office of Management and Budget to attack him, but uh, frankly, he's hold his, holding his own. He's a straight shooter. He's uh, fair and honest, as far as I can see. One of the best I've seen in the whole time I've been here, and I've been, I used to be on the Budget Committee. And all I can say is, is that, uh, you know, when you don't have a really good approach to things, uh, you then start blaming others, and that's really what's happening here. They do not have a plan that's really uh, being pushed by the president himself, other than this government-run plan. Now, uh, on your other, your other hat, in judiciary, Jeff Sessions, the ranking Republican, came out over the weekend in USA Today saying that he is going to vote against Judge Sotomayor in committee tomorrow. I know you already said you're going to vote against her. And I'm wondering, does this make Lindsey Graham the only um, committee Republican that you think is going to be voting with her, with the Democrats? Well, I, I can't speak for other, other Republicans on the committee or for Democrats, of course, but I, I just felt like uh, this is something, after looking at everything I possibly could to try and support her, uh, there were too many things that I felt were wrong about uh, her testimony. And I, it's the first time I'm not supporting a Supreme Court nominee, and I feel really badly about it because I like her. I think she's a good person in many ways. Uh, you know, I think she's uh, certainly got a good life story, and I liked her family. But then again, we're talking about one of the highest positions in the country today. And I think, uh, I think she is found wanting in so many ways uh, that uh, I just had to go against her. And you found her wanting because of rulings from the bench or because well, of things it. she said in her speeches? Well, uh, was all, it her intellectual all. background, her academic background? What was the single thing that made you decide that well, many, she is not qualified? Many of the above. Uh, frankly, uh, frankly uh, there were some answers that she gave that I felt didn't make sense. Uh, I did not like the Ritchie case. Uh, nine of her ten cases were criticized severely by the Supreme Court. Eight were reversed by the Supreme Court. She was criticized for the way she applied the law by the Supreme Court. And of course, uh, I just felt like uh, her answers on my questions with regard to the Puerto Rican Legal Defense Fund uh, were just not, uh, not accurate. And I felt we were not forth forthcoming, and I felt like, well, uh, we need people who are forthcoming. Uh, we understand that some things they can answer, but some things they can. And uh, I felt like her answers were not good. And then last but not least, let's face it, uh, uh, her analysis of the Second Amendment rights uh, I think was very flawed and something that I, that's something I feel very deeply about. You have no uh no notion that she's not going to be overwhelmingly confirmed? Well, I think she'll be confirmed, uh, but that doesn't mean that, that I should support somebody that I feel is, is, uh, is, uh, has not been totally forthcoming. Uh, you know, I feel badly about it because I like her personally, and I, uh, I, I hate to vote against anybody that the president uh, uh, puts forward as a, uh, as a judge or a judgeship nominee. And in her case, she has many things that are going for her, but some of these things were, uh, in analysis, uh, in my analysis, uh, uh, left a lot to be desired. All right, Orrin Hatch, thank you very much. Thank you, Senator.